Tere hommikust kõigile. Ma ajate, et saal on rahvas täis, võime alustada. Kui kellegil tekib veel soov kasutada sünkroon tõlget, siis andke märku, toome vastava attribuud ja saate kuulata. Üritame küll niimoodi aru saadavalt rääkida, et ei ole vaja. Meil on mõned väliskülalised, nii et osad ettekanded on inglise keeles kohe alguses. Ja ma annakski nüüd sõna esiteks meie väliskülalistele, kes siis on meid tegelikult siia toonud ja kes räägivad täpselt, kes nad on ja mis nad teevad ja miks me siia teid oleme kutsunud. Ja kõigepealt alustab Saila Rinne Euroopa Komissionist. Hello, good morning. Um, I just say a few words now since I'm going to have two other interventions du during the day. Uh, so I'm Saila Rinne. I work for Directorate General uh, for Communication Networks, Content and Technology in European Commission. I am based in Luxembourg and our unit is responsible for administrating the automated translation platform building block of the Connecting Europe facility. Uh, we will explain all about what it's all about uh, in a few minutes. Uh, I'm really glad to see so many of you here today and I'm glad to be here um, myself. Um, I will give the floor to Andres Vasiljevs, who is a um, member of the European Language Resource Coordination Consortium. Um, and then after the other welcoming speeches, I will talk about uh, the, the overall framework of this initiative. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Saela. Thank you, Jana. Uh, good morning. It's a really great pleasure to be here um, to address with a distinguished audience um, about topics that are not so often discussed uh, in uh, such a way uh, about uh, language technology and how that relates to the work that you do in public uh, institutions, administrations and um, other uh, institutions. And, uh, um, why these topics, what we will talk about, are important and uh, what exactly we will do over uh, this day. Um, uh, we believe, and um, uh, this belief is shared by millions and millions of Europeans, that language is important, that uh, we cannot just live uh, with, with English in our communication, although a lot of uh, uh, communication is done in English, because, yeah, language is part of our identity, it's uh, deeply embedded in our social and cultural life, and uh, language is uh, a, a, a big asset of uh, European cultural richness. At the same time, it creates barriers, barriers in communication, uh, barriers in information exchange. And it, it's uh, vividly displayed in this map. Actually, it's a map of uh, social communication, our Twitter network. And Twitter did such uh, uh, interesting work that they displayed in different colors uh, uh, tweets uh, what are circulating around uh, in Europe, uh, based on, on uh, uh, origination of the tweet. And you can see these, these, these borders, linguistic borders visually, what are very close to geographical borders in Europe. That means that communication is somehow enclosed in the silos, linguistic silos, meaning that people uh, pref strongly prefer to communicate in their language, uh, uh, and, but this communication, when it's circled, uh, enclosed in, in the language community. Uh, and, uh, yeah, translation is, is, is very important for this. Uh, translation is also uh, a very big cost position. Uh, uh, European institutions, European Commission, Parliament, Court of Justice and other institutions uh, uh, spend uh, uh, quite a huge uh, uh, money on uh, to provide translation for uh, all EU languages. Um, it's more than a billion euros uh, every year spent on, on translation. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a big challenge. And this is important uh, 
uh, also and particularly for, for smaller language communities. And, uh, and uh, I'm glad uh, to see so many of you coming to this workshop and uh, uh, such, such workshops are organizing all around the Europe and we see a strong interest in particular in smaller language uh, countries. Smaller I mean uh, uh, small in terms of speakers, not in terms of linguistic uh, value of the language and uh, language richness. Yeah, do not uh, <laughs> confuse this. Uh, uh, that for smaller languages, is, it's particularly important. Uh, actually, some years ago, I, I had the chance to uh, ask uh, a question to the famous uh, uh, American fut futurologist uh, Alvin Toffler, inventor of the third wave society in ocean, who predicted the information revolution back in 1970s. Uh, what will be the fate of smaller languages in the future, in this 21st century? Uh, uh, it will survive in the global communication with a strong dominance uh, of, of large languages uh, and particularly English. And his response was uh, quite uh, clear that uh, the, f uh, the fate of smaller languages depend on the speed of technological developments. And these, uh, if language technologies will develop faster than the rate of the rate diminishment due to the force of larger languages, then that will really enable uh, multilinguality in, in, in the global world and uh, smaller languages will be able to be used in pair to pair to larger ones. So language technologies are actually the only viable solution how we can ensure cross-border communica instant communication and, and translation in, in the 21st century, then demand is, is growing uh, potentially for, for, for translations. Uh, and uh, actually, uh, yeah, it's maybe from the pessimistic perspective, but uh, uh, probably some of you know uh, this uh, 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 notion of second Gutenberg effect, meaning that uh, uh, the Gutenberg invented back in the end of the 15th century printed press and those languages who uh, were used in printing and books and other publications were printed in those languages. Those languages, uh, are most of them used until today. But there were many more languages at, at well, uh, Gutenberg's time that are not used now because they were not widely used in, in the modern technologies of the, that time, well, in, in printing technologies. So language technologies nowadays are as important to introduce our languages in, in language technologies as um, it was in Gutenberg's time for the printing press. And it also uh, is... Uh, uh, stressed and described in details in, in analytical work uh, done uh, all across Europe. Uh, uh, Multilingual Europe Technology Alliance coordinated work of uh, more than 200 experts uh, across Europe in all uh, European countries to analyze uh, preparedness, readiness of uh, European languages for the challenges of digital age. And uh, uh, this is, uh, I think, very interesting uh, a novel work uh, what resulted in 30 books published by Springer, what are also available for free in digital form uh, at this link, uh, for, for, for uh, all EU languages and also some um, uh, languages of cooperation countries and uh, some minority languages. And, uh, and again, this, this, this uh, analytical work uh, uh, figured out that this, this challenge is uh, important for actually majority of EU languages. We have 24 official languages, plus if you take into account Icelandic or Norwegian um, as uh, cooperating countries, and 26 languages spoken, and most of them do not enjoy such uh, a hundred million population as, as bigger languages like English and French. So this, the same problems or the same needs are across the Europe. And now uh, this was like a, to, to show you the backgrounds and importance of this work. And now let's go to uh, the essence of, of this workshop. 
uh, as I, I said previously, technologies like machine translation are uh, very important to, to cross these linguistic borders. And the European Commission is, is working in this direction uh, for actually for many years. And in the uh, last several years, uh, this work of the Commission resulted in the machine translation system. Uh, call it MTITC, that is actually provided for the use for uh, more than 2,000 translators at the uh, uh, Translation Directorate of, of, of Commission. Uh, and this shows, uh, and for, for many languages, uh, the application of machine translation already bring uh, major benefits in terms of faster and uh, cheaper uh, tr uh, uh, tr translations, meaning that translators could be more productive being able to translate uh, larger volumes uh, in, in, in a shorter time with the help of machine translation, but for uh, some uh, types of text can provide uh, translation quality that is usable with uh, uh, after post-editing efforts, what we will tell a talk about a bit more later today. But these uh, current techniques, uh, current technologies, are by, by far not uh, good enough, uh, uh, not reach the level uh, that would fully satisfy the broad variety of needs in, in, in public translation. And uh, this is why European Commission has launched a major initiative to develop automated translation service as a part of European digital service infrastructures. Uh, it's a bit uh, Brussels jargon, I'm sorry for that, but uh, everything should be named as you know. And this term CEF stands for uh, Connecting Europe Facilities. These are European infrastructures in, in uh, telecommunication and transport and other areas. But, uh, uh, among these infrastructures are digital services and translation, automated translation is recognized for the first time as uh, among the b uh, essential uh, ch key services to be provided for, for, for Europeans, particularly for public institutions, administrations, uh, both uh, um, central European institutions uh, and uh, national uh, public administrations. And uh, this MTATC system is part of this, uh, this work and uh, it's being improved uh, all the time and it's already available and provided for free for public administrations. And we will tell you about later today about this in more details. You already can, can access and try it and if you see that it fits your needs to use it in your everyday work. But uh, for... for um, number of languages, the quality is not as good as for, I would say, uh, 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 linguistically not so complex languages as, as uh, English and Spanish, where are not so many variations of, of word forms. Uh, and including the Baltic, uh, languages of Baltic countries, Estonian, uh, uh, Latvian, Lithuanian. And uh, uh, how to improve these systems, how to make them, uh, those really usable uh, for this, data is essential. Translations of the text, uh, uh, texts uh, what are translated from one language to other language, is a basis from which uh, algorithms of these machine translation systems are able to learn how to translate better. The statistical algorithms uh, of machine translation actually are informed by human translations and we can improve by, by getting more material to learn from. And, this, uh, and again, we will tell uh, a bit more about this, uh, uh, how, how, how does it work later today. Uh, uh, I j just introduced some of the topics that we will talk about. Uh, but the uh, essential message is that uh, language uh, data translations uh, are very important to improve machine translation and in public institutions, in public sector, there's a lot of data, but uh, sometimes it's not recognized as a useful data for technologies. These are just documents or translation memories, uh, but it's not just 
documents. This is, could also be turned into a valuable uh, resource for, for training and improving machine translation, what you can later use uh, in a proved version in, in, in your work. And again, um, how to coordinate this work to facilitate uh, uh, identification of these uh, uh, trans translated materials across EU member states and to collect those and to process those and actually to use those to improve machine translation. For this purpose, uh, uh, this uh, European Language Resource Coordination uh, activity or project is started uh, across all the Europe in every EU member country plus uh, Norway and Iceland to, uh, to establish this language resource coordination mechanism to involve all the member states in, in this process uh, to identify valuable resources, to collect them, to process them uh, so that machine translation could be significantly improved with, with your help uh, and so that these uh, technologies could be uh, provided for your everyday work and also applied in different uh, services, not only for human translations, but also for digital services. Just one example, you probably know Europeana, big European digital library collecting cultural heritage <coughs> from uh, all across Europe. But these cultural records are in uh, different, many different languages. How to find them, how to use them if you want to learn what's going on like in, uh, in Bulgaria, uh, uh, what uh, heritage is in museum in Bulgaria. You can, again, will be able to use machine translation to get access to this data. This is just one example, but there are many other examples. But uh, with some of them we will talk later today. So, uh, why I am here <laughs> and uh, some of other colleagues, uh, it's uh, because yeah, uh, uh, I represent language technology company Tilde and we are happy to be uh, selected as a consortium partner in a consortium what enables, what uh, <coughs> is responsible for this uh, European language resource coordination activity. And uh, these consortium members are DFKI, is the Center of Artificial Intelligence in Germany. It's a European language data agency uh, 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 what is uh, like executive part of European Language uh, Resource Association. Uh, it's uh, a, a research center in Greece, ILSP, what uh, researches and develops uh, multilingual technologies and also industry association, uh, TAUS, Translation Automation User Society, which is a subcontractor in, in, in this consortium of four main partners. Uh, and so, a bit more about uh, Tilde. Uh, Tilde is a uh, leading European uh, developer of language technologies and provider of language services. And we are deeply rooted in, in uh, Baltic countries with offices uh, here in Tallinn, uh, uh, in Riga and Vilnius. And we uh, uh, have a tight cooperation with, with researchers and also other industry players across Europe to develop next generation language technologies with particular focus on, on complex languages that are spoken for uh, not so many people and there are not so many data available uh, how, how to get better technologies for these languages. And we can, our technologies and, and tools are, are used by uh, public institutions in, in government sector, by multinational companies uh, like uh, Microsoft for Bing Translator, for example, use some of our technologies and uh, also by, by uh, many individuals and, and, and companies uh, in Baltics and across Europe. And uh, how in developing these technologies, it's important to cooperate. And we are uh, 
because like breakthrough innovations can come if uh, if uh, you get the critical mass of, of, of knowledge and, and resources and talent. And so we are happy to coordinate and partner in several large scale <coughs> European uh, R&D uh, and innovation projects resulting in systems like Euro Term Bank, uh, uh, the uh, terminology resource uh, that has, uh, connects different terminology bases, including IATE, uh, terminology base of European institutions, uh, or uh, um, Let's MT technologies. This is uh, like machine translation factory, uh, enabling adaptation of machine translation to different particular fields and domains. So, uh, and we will be happy to share our uh, tools and uh, experience uh, with, with, with you to help you get the most out of your data and your uh, resources. So, what uh, are the main activities uh, that are being, uh, being organized and done in this uh, coordination action? Uh, those are, first of all, workshops organized uh, here in Tallinn as well as in other countries all other countries in e Europe, uh, plus uh, Norway and Iceland. And uh, the purpose of this workshop yeah, to, is to, to inform, to tell you about these activities, to make you aware about the value of the data that you have, and to encourage you to share, to, to contribute with your data for, for better language technologies. Uh, then uh, 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 every year, uh, the larger conference uh, is organized and the first conference took place in uh, Riga last year during uh, Riga summit of um, multilingual digital single market and the next conference will take place second half of this year and uh, we will also uh, inform you as soon as the location and uh, dates of the conference will be finalized and you are invited and encouraged to attend uh, this uh, event gathering uh, uh, technology developers, uh, uh, European Commission officials and uh, national uh, representatives from all across Europe. And uh, yeah, um, another uh, t our task is to promote best practices of the use of uh, tr translation technologies, machine trick technologies and tools that are available and uh, in particular practice what, uh, uh, what is in use of machine translation in, in Baltic countries and uh, some of these examples we will also highlight today at, at this workshop. And the technical help desk is provided where you can uh, what you can call or write to and what will help you to address your uh, technical or also legal uh, questions. Legal aspects are, are very important and, and sometimes they are scary, but there are actually are answers how to solve some of these seemingly complex, but uh, in reality, in many cases, not so difficult uh, uh, legal issues related to to sharing of, of your documents and data for technology developments and actual practical work in identification and collection of language resources. And uh, you can learn a bit more and to see presentations of the first uh, conference in Riga last year at this website, Riga Summit 2015 EU, uh, or uh, you can go and find that information also on, on this uh, website, lrcoordination.eu, that is dedicated website for uh, this uh, coordination action. And uh, this is uh, like a general outline of what we will talk uh, about today. And so the main objectives as is to tell you uh, and about value and importance of, of data that you have, uh, to encourage you, to invite you to involve in this uh, coordination action, um, to, to help to solve legal and uh, technical aspects that are related to this, actually, and then uh, to ensure that the valuable data what, what are in, in your institutions and institutions in other countries are shared, uh, not only with European Commission, but uh, what is 
very important with with with, nas uh, with uh, national institutions and in uh, uh, here. Uh, Estonian Language Resource Center is, is, is doing uh, excellent work in coordinating and promoting work of la on language resources and uh, with data uh, will be provided to this uh, center and also to other institutions that may be interested to on, on this as well. And so this will help to develop Estonian language to be stronger and prepared for, for the challenges of the digital age. So, uh, yeah, supporting uh, your language is supporting Europe, and supporting Europe is supporting our languages. So with this motto, I, I would like to conclude, and also to say many thanks to uh, uh, our partners uh, in organization of this workshop, uh, European Commission Representation Office, uh, uh, DG Connect, it's a directorate uh, in European Commission that co uh, coordinates this activity, uh, and Language Resource Center uh, in, 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 in Tartu. And uh, thank you. Have a good and efficient day today. Avasenad ütlevad nüüd ka Eesti keele ressurside keskuse juht Kadri Viider. Teiega, sest ma olen käinud Eesti keele tehnoloogiat ja Eesti keele ressursse küll reklaamimas mitmesuguste auditoriumide eest, aga auditoriumide ees, aga teie tema veel väga ei ole sattunud, selles mõttes on tore näha uusi nägusid. Ja oma ettekandes Ma siis räägiksin lähemalt sellest, mida mina tean, millega ma tegelen, olen laiemalt eesti keelest digimaailmas. Aga see ettekanne veel tuleb. Sisse juhatav osa lõpetuseks ütleksin siis ka tere tulemast Euroopa Komissioni Eesti esinduse poolt. Mina olen Jaana Laurend ja mul on väga hea meel, et see üritus täna siin Euroopa Liidu majas toimub ja et vaatamata aina Tuure Koguvale Kripi hooajale nii palju teist on siiski kohale jõudnud. Enne Tallinnasse tööle asumist olin mina Brüsselis tõlkija seal samas Euroopa Komissionis ja ma pean tunnistama, et meile pakutud maasindelke vahendit mina eriti sagel ei kasutanud. Kuna kuna ma ei taha nüüd kogu üritust saboteerida, aga aga Ta lihtsalt ei annud eesti keeles piisavalt häid tulemusi, nii et suurem, enamasti ta pigem aeglustas minu tööd, kui, kui kiirendas seda. Selle pärast on mul aga hea meel, et komission on otsustanud seda masintelke vahendit edasi arendada, sest oma töö käigus ma nägin, et see oli tegelikult suureks abiks paljudele tõlkijatele, kel keele puhul masintelke täiesti aitas neid. Ja neil oli suur ajavõit ja nad suutsid lühem ajaga tõlkida palju rohkem kui meie, kes ma siin tõlget ei saanud kasutada ja kõike nullist tegime. Et selles mõttes on, on väga tore, et seda ma siin tõlget arendatakse ka, ka teiste keelte jaoks. Ja um, see annab nagu võrdsemad võimalused, mitte üksnes kõikide Euroopa Liidu keelte rääkijatele, vaid ka tõlkijatele, kes kõigist nendest keeltest peavad tõlkima ja oma keelde siis tõlkima. Et, äh, loomulikult ei asenda, ma siin tõlge mitte kunagi inim tõlge, et selles ma olen täiesti, täiesti veendunud, kuid äh, ma arvan siiski, et kvaliteetne ma siin tõlge äh, aitab siiski äh, seda üha kasvavad tõlke vajandust äh, rahuldada. Ja ma isiklikult väga suure huviga ootan tänaseid ettekandeid ja arutelusid, et mõista paremini siis selle masintelke potentsiaali ja, ja kasutusvõimalusi. Nii et äh, ärge olge liiga skeptilised.